entitled Karen requests expensive knife set for her kid for only 50 bucks. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. I'm a cook by trade and have begun working in the industry for nearly 10 years now. This happened roughly a year and a half ago and I would often make a grocery run at the local Whole Foods which is along my way home. I'm by default a helpful sort of guy. I'm often in my black chef's coat with the restaurant logo on the shoulders and name tag on my right breast, sometimes heavily soiled if work was busy, and carrying my knife roll bag on my shoulder. So if people are looking lost at the aisles and they see me, they often ask for advice. This is usually people asking about gluten-free products, antioxidants, accident stuff and whatnot. I'm more than happy to help. I will note that the cooking staff here work in white coats rather than black. One day, after a day of hard work, I'm at Whole Foods picking out flour for pancakes as the next day would be my day off. Cake flour for souffle pancakes if you're that interested. An older gentleman asked me of my opinion on spices, which are absurdly expensive in supermarkets, and I advise him to actually go to a wholesale store to get them cheaper and in bulk rather than buy the tiny little bottles of overpriced spices. We got into a discussion about baking and which flours were best for certain items for several minutes, and he left a happy man. Insert the moment we've all been waiting for. Here's the cast. Entitled mother, fairly nice looking, horrible personality. Entitled kid, six year old kid who'd rather not be here and spoiled beyond all reason. Me, happy to help, not happy to be screeched at by ungrateful people. Manager, nice fellow, never saw him again. And the assistant manager who's now the manager. Entitled kid. Hey mister, are you a chef? Me. Haha, <laughs> sure I am. Entitled kid. What are you gonna make? Me. Big fluffy pancakes tomorrow. Entitled kid. What's that on your back? Me. Oh, that's my knife set. I carry it with me because they're very expensive and I don't want anyone to take them when I'm not working. Q is mother who had apparently been looking for him. She sees me and her eyes instantly light up. Entitled mother. Oh, excuse me. Can you help me? Me. Sure. What do you need? Entitled mother. I'm looking for activated almonds. Do you know where I can get them? Me. Laughing a little. Um, yeah, but you should know that activated almonds are literally just almonds sitting overnight in water. It doesn't have any special properties. Entitled mother. Really? That sounds like a scam. Me. Oh, it really is. Entitled mother. Then do you know where I can find the pickles? Me. Should be in the can section. And I pointed towards the aisle. Entitled mother. Can you show me? Me. Okay, sure. I grabbed my basket with flour, eggs, and whatnot, and this honestly should have clued the Entitled Mother in. Entitled Mother barrages me with questions about the various pickles on the shelves as I help her get the ones she needed for her sandwiches. Me. While explaining what the different kind of pickles there were and how to pickle at home, I set my knife bag against the shelf because my shoulder was aching. Entitled Kid. At this point, bored as heck and not at all interested in the advice being vomited by yours truly, decides to grab my bag in an attempt to inspect it. Me. Oh, sorry kid, you can't touch that. I grab a hold of my bag. Entitled Kid. Looks shocked that I took it away from him and is making an angry face. Entitled mother. Oh, don't worry about him. Entitled kid is a careful boy. He won't break anything. Me. That may well be true, ma'am, but I'm not risking a child cutting themselves on my knives. Entitled mother. Don't be so selfish. You should be glad my son is taking an interest in your profession. Me. That's great and all, but you should teach your child not to grab strangers' things, especially if it's full of potentially dangerous tools. Entitled mother. Don't tell me how I should raise my child. Apologize now. Me. I'm not going to apologize from stopping your kid from grabbing my bag of knives. Knives. Entitled kid. I want to see them. Entitled mother. Oh, come on. Can't you let him see your knives? Me. I'm sorry, man, but these are my personal tools and taking them out in a public setting would be dangerous and unprofessional. Entitled mother. I'll buy it off you. Me. What? Entitled mother. Here. This should be enough. Pulls out $50. Me. Lady, the chef knife alone cost me well over $250. Never mind the bag itself is at least $50. Entitled mother. You're lying. Me. Whatever, I'm not going to argue with you. Good day, ma'am. At this point, I am done with this entitled mother, but she is not letting go. Literally. She grabs a hold of my knife bag and demands that I sell it to her. Entitled mother. You don't deserve these. Hand them over or I'll call your manager. Me. At this time, I believe she was talking about my actual manager at the establishment I worked at. Go ahead. Now let go. Entitled mother makes incoherent screeching noises as I tear my knife bag out of her claws and walk away. About five minutes later, I'm accosted again by the entitled mother who has gotten herself a resigned looking manager. Being sort of a regular at the Whole Foods, people know me by appearance and the manager sees me and looks surprised. Entitled mother. There he is. I want that man fired and arrested. Me. What? Arrested for what? Entitled mother tells the manager some BS about me selling the knives to her before running off with a strangely vague comment about money. Me. Lady, I said I'm not going to sell these knives to you and I don't even work here. Entitled mother looks at the manager. Manager. 
Uh, he's right, he doesn't work here. He works at the restaurant. And he points at my shoulder. Entitled mother makes incoherent, confused noises. Manager. Also, I've got someone to watch the security cameras, and... In comes the assistant manager. Assistant manager. Hey, I've looked over the tapes, and you're lying. He, he points at me, was helping you before your kid grabbed his stuff. He warned him off, and you offered him money, but he declined. Manager, looking at Entitled Mother with raised eyebrow. Ma'am, are we gonna have a problem here? Entitled Mother makes a noise reminiscent of a strangled cat and apologetically shuffles away. And that's it. I paid for my stuff, went home, and made the fluffiest, softest pancakes known to man the very next day. Then I got a text from my actual manager who was asking about a woman complaining about me specifically and writing bad reviews. Needless to say, that was the last we heard of the woman, for the next few weeks anyway, but that's a different story entirely. Sort of. So let me ask, am I the jerk? I think we're going to have to go with a resounding no to the jerk on this one. It's quite clear that the mother is completely out of her element in raising a child and does not understand the basic common decency of interacting with other human beings. The assumptions that people can make and the power they think they hold over you just because you work at the place that they happen to be at, in this case, he didn't even work there, is absolutely astounding to me. The whole customer is always right phrase gets taken way too far with people like this. They'll sit there and lie to the manager about an employee doing something that never happened. Little do they know, the managers know you people exist, and they're going to go back and check the footage. And the person that you're complaining about, they've been working with probably for an extended period of time, and know the behavior you're describing is not like them at all. Either way, all this entitled mother ended up walking away with was a huge amount of embarrassment. I'm glad we all got to share in this story. Before we jump into the next one, if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Entitled lady seems delusional about whose party it really is. Last night was a farewell party for the assistant manager at my job. He's been with the company for almost 15 years and it was his second to last day. Today is the day. He had all my respect from all the time he took to supervise me and answer all my questions. He was also easygoing and knew how to balance between professionalism and social skills, creating lifelong regular customers. It was sad to see him go and we did have a good time, save for this entitled Medusa dropping in like a bomb. Cast. Me, the guts, the assistant manager, sales lady, decent husband, entitled Entitled Medusa and Entitled Kraken. As the party's being set up, assistant manager was touched to see so many people coming to see him off. Employees of both our and other stores, the CEO himself, and even some of assistant manager's regulars were there. One of the regulars was Decent Husband. And not only he had a strong relationship with the assistant manager, but with our whole company as well. So the party starts and we got to the point where assistant manager was giving his speech thanking everyone. We suddenly heard the front door bursting open. In comes Entitled Medusa with entitled Kraken in tow, loudly announcing her late arrival. Decent husband tells her to quiet down. Assistant manager continues to finish off the speech, and some of the employees begin setting up the makeshift buffet. I saw decent husband pull entitled Medusa and entitled Kraken aside. I couldn't hear everything, but from what I gathered, entitled Medusa was supposed to be at home with entitled Kraken, but entitled Medusa thought she could help drop in as decent husband's guest. She also claimed that it was free food and entitled Kraken was being really cranky about hunger. Sales lady who practically prepared everything was very specific on not bringing an extra guest, and she was livid. Decent husband apologized and told sales lady he'll try and get Entitled Medusa out of here as soon as possible. The food gets ready and everyone gets in line. It just so happens that Entitled Medusa and Entitled Kraken were right behind me and Decent Husband standing after them. The food were mostly barbecue foods. Burgers, hot dogs, grilled chicken, veggie sides, etc. I was grabbing the stuff I want when Entitled Medusa started to complain. Entitled Medusa. So there's no vegan foods here at all? Decent husband. There are salad and chips. Entitled Medusa. So others get grilled foods and I have to settle with salads? I want something vegan grilled. Sales lady. One of the two people on the grill. Oh, sorry. I guess I didn't count for everyone. Entitled Medusa. Well, you should be. Since we are the guests, you should have thought what we preferred. Decent husband. Entitled Medusa. Cut it out. Entitled Medusa. No, they were idiots who should have thought of everything. Entitled Kraken, pulling on Entitled Medusa's skirt. Mommy, I want some candies. Sales lady. Oh, sorry there, little one. We don't have any candies. We have meat. Entitled Kraken. But I want some candies. Entitled Medusa. No, sweetie, there are delicious foods here. You need to learn to eat what's in front of you. Me. And you need to learn to practice what you preach instead of complaining. Entitled Medusa turns to face me. Who are you? Me. Bruce Lee. Now stop talking and get your food. Entitled Medusa. Are you even an employee here? 
This is a private party. Me. Actually, I've been with the company for almost two years. Entitled Medusa. You don't belong here. Me. How do you know and why are you here then? You don't even know who the party's for. Entitled Medusa. I don't care who the party's for. It shouldn't even matter because all parties should be about guests. About me and Entitled Kraken. Decent husband. Entitled Medusa, that's enough. Entitled Medusa. No, not until this joke is fired. Sales lady, just take your food already and go. Entitled Medusa looks at both me and sales lady with eyes of fury, but complies and takes her food and entitled Krakens and goes to somewhere as far away from me as possible. Decent husband and sales lady, meanwhile, are grabbing a drink to calm down, and I do the same. Sales lady is visibly peeved, but trying to keep her composure. Assistant manager is also trying to enjoy his time at the party. So I'm playing Final Fantasy VI on my phone, terrible sprite by the way, when I see Entitled Kraken and Entitled Medusa standing next to me. Me. Oh, hello, can I help you? Entitled Kraken. I'm bored and there are no games to play here. I want to play Fortnite on your phone. Me. No, sorry, this phone is incapable of playing Fortnite. Lies. Just didn't want Entitled Kraken to touch it. Entitled Kraken. But I want to play. Me. No, sorry. Please let me eat in peace. Entitled Medusa. How dare you upset my child? You will hand over your phone right now. Me. And why should I? Entitled Medusa. Because if you are an employee, you should listen to what the customer says. The customer is always right. Me. We are past hours of operation. Everyone is off the clock. There are no employees here, so I don't have to listen to you. What gives you the right to take away my phone? I bought it with my own money. Entitled Medusa. Shut up and give me your phone. Me. Putting it away in my pocket. No. Entitled Medusa glares at me, grabs the plate that still had some food on it, and threw it at me. It really wasn't a hard throw but it landed on my shirt, ruining it. Me. What the heck is your problem? Entitled Medusa. That's what you get for not listening to your guest. This is where sales lady steps in. Sales lady. You know what? I had enough. This party was held in honor of assistant manager for his career with our company. You came uninvited, and not only did you complain about free food, but you also harassed one of my employees. Get out right now before we remove you by force. Entitled Medusa was about to protest when decent husband comes over to drag them out of the store. Both sales lady and assistant manager were peeved off, but soon calmed down and joined in small talks and conversation. This morning, decent husband came in and apologized to assistant manager for entitled Medusa's behavior and talked about how their relationship has gone astray and his plans to divorce entitled Medusa while taking custody of entitled Kraken. Wow. So here we are back again with another situation of the customer always thinking they're right. Except in this instance, they weren't even a customer. The store was closed. You're at a party that you were not invited to, making demands of strangers, saying you're a customer when you're not. I, I don't know how to argue with you, lady. It's quite obvious why the husband's divorcing her, because as far as she's concerned, there's no way you should be arguing against her in any circumstance, it seems. I'd be curious to see how this woman would react if the shoe was on the other foot. Anyone who has not worked retail or anything in a customer service position can sometimes really take for granted those people and that they're there to help you. In this instance, they were just strangers trying to enjoy a good time and you're demanding services from them. It's just not okay no matter what way you slice it. My nosy sister-in-law really needs to learn to mind her own business and keep her opinions to herself. I can't stand my sister-in-law. Everything about her grates on my nerves and her very presence can instantly darken my mood. For the sake of family peace, I've kept all of this bottled up. I try to keep contacts with her to a minimum, but if we have to be in the same room together, I'm always civil and polite. No one knows my true feelings towards her. My dislike of my sister-in-law stems from her belief that she knows everything. No matter the topic of discussion, she'll have an opinion. Most of her knowledge is flat out wrong and the ones that are correct, she only has surface level knowledge knowledge, but will hold herself out to be an expert. A perfect example and the reason why I'm here is the following situation. Recently, we had a family gathering where my niece, my sister's daughter, not sister-in-laws, and her husband asked me for advice about buying their first home. The reason why they asked me is because my side hustle is collecting rental properties. I own about three dozen rental properties, residential and commercial, have a great working relationship with a couple of real estate agents and contractors, and have a personal relationship with the bank that finances most of my purchases. We spoke for about 30 minutes when sister-in-law overheard and injected herself into our conversation. I'd like to point out that she and my brother rent and have never owned any properties. She started to give contradictory advice that made no sense. 
Like I told my niece, she should never buy a house in a flood zone because flood insurance is expensive and mandatory with a mortgage. Sister-in-law started to say that the niece won't have to pay flood insurance if she doesn't report to the bank that the house is in a flood zone because several of her friends got away with that. I looked at her like she just farted an arm out of her ear. I told her that's not how banks work, but she argued she knows people who did that. Another example is that I told my niece that she should wait and work on increasing her FICO score while lowering her debt to income ratio in order to get the best possible rate. Sister-in-law asked what a FICO score is, and after I explained it's the average credit score of the three main credit agencies, sister-in-law told my niece she should just turn in the highest score and not the average. Once again, I told her that's not how banks work. After several terrible advices, I lost my temper and told her to mind her own business and keep her incorrect opinions to herself. This made her cry and started an argument between me and my brother. Our parents want me to apologize, but I think it's time someone tells her she doesn't know everything. So am I the jerk? So for this one, I kind of feel like you're not really the jerk in this situation, but it's unfortunate that she received this the way she did. Sometimes harsh truths can be a little upsetting for some people, and she has to realize that you do have more knowledge in this field than she does. It sucks that she got upset as a result, but that's something that a normal person should be able to take in without it being that big a deal. At the end of the day, every single person you meet knows something that you don't. She does have some knowledge on certain topics that the original poster doesn't have. But in a situation like this, where it's very clear that the poster has an excessive amount of knowledge on the topic, and hers is rather limited, she should really just step back and let him say what he needs to say. Or at the very least, be able to accept that maybe some of what you're saying isn't correct and they might know more than you. Random stranger tries to reprimand me for smoking. I'm a 25 year old female and I'm a smoker. I know it's a nasty habit, but it is what it is. The other day I was taking a smoke break at work and some guy, 50 to 60 year old male, came up to me saying something like, is it worth it to slowly kill yourself with cigarettes? He then told me about someone he knew who died of lung cancer. I was already having a bad day and I totally snapped at this guy. I was like, sorry for your loss, but did I ask? I obviously know that it's unhealthy. I'm not stupid. He then kind of gave me a face and said he was just trying to be helpful. I just said, no, thanks, put my cigarette out and went back inside. This has happened to me before and it's always older men. Listen, I know smoking is gross and very unhealthy, but I don't think it's some random person's place. Maybe I'm reaching here, but especially coming from an older man trying to tell a woman in her 20s what to do. Always complete strangers, by the way. I've spoken to some of my male friends about this phenomenon who also smoke, and they were perplexed, saying they've never experienced this. This has happened to me four times that I can think of. I guess I was just fed up with it and unleashed it all on this guy in particular. He also told my boss about it since I was at work. Lucky for me, my boss is super chill and just told me not to engage with the guy again. I admit it was very unprofessional of me to do at work, but I don't think I was in the wrong. Am I the jerk? Okay, this one's a little more juicy, I feel. This is another example of a situation where anger is coming from another place. In this case, this comment had been made to her a few times before and had annoyed her in the past. Now all of this has been bottled up and funneled towards one person who maybe didn't deserve to take the full brunt of all of it. Now the fact that she says it's typically older males who are approaching her to make these comments brings another question into it in that are they just looking for an excuse to talk to a pretty young girl? This is entirely possible. As she said, her her male friends have never experienced a situation like this with strangers. And to be perfectly honest, my mind kind of leans that way as well. Sure, it may be introduced as an innocent, I'm looking out for you, I'm just trying to help kind of thing, but in reality, they might just like having a few minutes to talk to a pretty young girl. I had to limit my husband's contact with other people after surgery just so he could get some rest. My husband had gallbladder surgery last week. Things didn't go well and it started to rupture during the surgery. A big mess, lots of pus and infection. Took three hours instead of a quick 45 minutes. The next day in the aftermath, I told my husband I was taking his cell phone from him because he was in a bad way and I could see that the constant calls and messages were stressing him out. I was worried because he was the sickest I'd ever seen him. I kept possession of the phone through his homecoming and a few days later until he told told me he felt better and would welcome a few calls from family only. Family wasn't the problem. It was nosy church people. During the time I had his phone, I told his callers that he'd get in touch with them when he was ready and to please not call in order to keep the line open for our children and family. One went so far as to try and just drop by 20 minutes after we got home. I rebuffed her, telling her that he'd contact her when he was better. He's only this afternoon felt well enough to call a few friends back, and all of them complained to him that I was some sort of enormous jerk for limiting contact 
contact during his hospitalization. He told them that I was protecting him and that he was appreciative of me giving him space to start to heal from everyone. I've had to tell a few more today that he's still not ready for visitors, and we're spending hours a day going back and forth to the hospital for him to get outpatient antibiotic IVs. Just got cussed out for being a killjoy and called a jerk. So, am I the jerk? Absolutely not. I think this one is a resounding no on the jerk front. These people need to understand that your husband is sick, he's not feeling well, all the attention that they're giving him, while it may be coming from a good place, is just not good for him right now. In a situation like this, he needs rest. He needs time away from drama and other people. It's not like she's handcuffed him in the basement and they're never going to see him again. He just needs a few days of rest. They're completely blowing this whole thing out of proportion by blaming the wife and calling her names. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.